Today we come together to bid a fond farewell to a companion in my display cases. The Hot Toys Iron Man Mark III. As we stand on the precipice of change, let us reflect on the memories and marvels this figure has brought into my life. The Iron Man Mark III with its sleek red and gold armor has been more than a collectible. It has been a symbol of resilience, evolution, and the endurance spirit of Tony Stark's ingenuity. From the moment it grazed my shelf, it became a centerpiece, capturing the essence of a technological marvel and the audacity of one man's vision to turn dreams into reality. This figure, meticulously crafted in exquisite detail, has stood as a testament to the craftsmanship and passion of the creators at Hot Toys, to posability, attention to detail, and faithful representation of the iconic Mark III suit have made it not just a figure on our shelves, but a revered piece of art that has sparked conversations and inspired awe. But as with all things in life, change is inevitable. Today we mark the end of an era as we part ways with this beloved figure to make room for a new iteration. The decision to bid farewell to the Mark III is not a goodbye, but rather a celebration of the evolution of our collection. As Tony Stark once said, sometimes you gotta run before you can walk. In embracing the new version, the Mark III 2.0, we honor the legacy of the original of the Mark III that was released a while ago. The Mark III recognized by its progress, innovation, and advancements that have come since its inception. Just as Iron Man evolves to meet new challenges, so does our collection. Evolving with the times and embracing the cutting edge craftsmanship that Autoys continually brings to our beloved heroes. As we place the Mark III in its temporary slumber within its packaging, let us remember the joy it brought, the conversations it sparked, and the memories it holds. In the spirit of gratitude, we say thank you to the Mark III, the original Mark III diecast, for its faithful service within my Hall of Armor. And we welcome the new iteration, the Mark III 2.0, with anticipation and excitement. Farewell, original diecast Mark III. And may your adventure be as thrilling and awe-inspiring as the moments you've shared with me. As I turn the page to a new chapter, I am deeply grateful for your representation within my collection Thank you. And on with the show. Finally, it is here. The Iron Man Mark III from Hot Toys. I've had this for a few weeks, folks. I finally have the time and dedication to properly unbox it. But before I do, I do want to give a shout out to the wonderful folks from Andy Man. They have provided me with a level two charger and uh, I do a fantastic job actually installing it and kind of going through some of the details. Yes, folks, like Tony Stark, I'm a proponent of clean alternative energy. Use my Amazon link and my code to save 15% off. One, you know, the great thing about this uh, specific level two charger is that it has a 25 foot extra long cable, 50 amps, maximum 12 kilowatt, plus it is savvy with uh, the uh, the app, shows you a breakdown. I love it, it's a great unit. Uh, help support the channel, use my Amazon link and code. Now on with the show, folks. The MMS664 Iron Man. Mark III 2.0. We're back. <laughs> We're back, folks. Beautiful uh, box. Stark Industries. Oh, there you go. Cool nifty logo. Where have I seen that before? Wink, wink. <laughs> that is a Hot Toys uh, light box. 
contains button batteries. Like, yeah, that's not going to be good. This is going to bite us in the ass here. Button cell batteries. They come out with the Mark 1 USB upgrade, but yet they're still having difficulties with the later suits. Um, I suspect maybe a 3.0 <laughs> Mark 3 a few years down the road showing up. <sighs> Look, if they keep making it better, you know, you build it, the fans will, the, the, the fans will come. Um, it works on me. Ten years later. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. All that lead paint. Oh, love it. Love that smell. I, I'm so, when it comes to the iron suits, I, I'm so easy. I'll, I will confess, folks. I love it. I love the whole experience. I love the fact that I, I get to revisit older suits from the, uh, the, the golden era of, of, of the MCU, you know, MCU, you know, 2008, 9, 10, you know, when MCU used to mean something. <laughs> it's going to come back, folks. The MCU will come back. In the meantime, Hot Toys is like, well, shoot, since we can't make any money off of the Disney Plus schlock, let's, uh, let's go revisit some of our early work. And you know what? And when, when Hot Toys is in trouble, print Iron Man, and uh, it works. The key is providing a benefit. What can you bring new that's going to attract new customers and the veteran old fogies like me? Well, you introduce a, a 2.0. Improve on it. Beautiful paint application, increase the height, add a you know few bells and whistles, and you have a work of art. Plus, the Mark III is just... It's, it's a legendary suit, folks. It, it just is. Not to mention that they're giving a lot of collectors a, a second chance at life at building the original Legacy 7. The seven suits, that's, you know, that's really where it matters. The seven suits. Now, if they can just use some of this R&D magic uh, and apply it to a, a 2.0 Hall of Armor, I'll confess I may be interested. Their first run at the Hall of Armors uh, was not good. Plagued with problems, battery issues, uh, daisy chain effect. The Hall of Arm, the original Hall of Armors were just were just a mess. I don't have them anymore. I got rid of them. They're just not good. So, you folks who know me, I have a built, I have a custom built Hall of Armor uh, that caters to the original seven because the original seven are like the forefathers <laughs> now right off the bat and this is something that a lot of folks are just like well i already have the mark three well look having the mark three 2.0 in hand it 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 shines it pops this is some next level shit here folks you absolutely not only feel the difference as far as as texture uh, articulation the weight the 2.0 suit is just a lot more heavier it, it clearly makes the first version the poor cousin. And it's hard to ignore that there's a better attractive suit. And look, there may be folks out there like, hey, you know what, I'm fine. Denobi, I'm, I'm humble. I will make the 1.0 work. Hey, you know what? Ain't no shame in that. But I'm easy. <laughs> it's not that hard to woo me. You make an astounding product like this, you have my money blasting it with this type of resolution it it speaks for itself it's the very it's the uh, it's the it's the cornerstone the 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 birth of what i started a little over 10 years ago the visual tour let the products speak for themselves that's the whole idea and apologies but the the one point the first version diecast isn't aging very well now when you have the uh, the the next gen model right next to it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this version. I typically will sell the first version suits. It, it, it serves no purpose. I, I'm not gonna store it and throw it in the garage and just let it wither away. It, it's just, the the longer I hold on to it, I, the the value is just it just tends to diminish. It's not so much about making a profit. It's is that out with the old, in with the new. Look at this man. Beautiful suit, beautiful suit. Now this 2.0 Mark III does come with a uh, head sculpt and a couple extra pairs of hands. I'm gonna 
swap out the hands and use the articulated fingers. But I gotta say though, uh, they get an A plus on the head sculpt. I, I'm not gonna be using this head sculpt. It's probably gonna stay in its packaging. Now, what's nice about these head, head sculpts is that, is that you can repurpose them down the road with third party kit bodies. You can put this head sculpt, I don't know, in a suit or in a racing suit or something like that to, to that effect. I don't have any plans for this head sculpt at, at all. I don't have no intention of uh, applying it to the actual suit or, or attaching it. Uh, this Mark III will serve its purpose and its its representation within the Hall of Armor. I guess that's the uh, uh, neck attachment there, so forth. Uh, I do like the battle hardened faceplate on there. That's cool. It looks really nice. Very, very nice. And he gets his ass kicked by the uh, uh, Iron Monger. So I'm just going to swap out some of these pairs here. I, I, For me, with when it comes to the hands, it's always going to be the articulate. And sometimes the, the flight pose hands. I've never been a big fan of the fist. I don't know because for me, it, it limits the light effect, the uh, re, re, repulsor blast from his uh, palm. It just, when you have it closed, it just tends to uh, hold back on that. Look at that. Look at all those wonderful little button cell batteries. What a, what a joke, Hodge. Huh? <laughs> seriously, man. Seriously. Uh, we're going to have to tackle that. I, I, I think the base with Iron Monger is cool. It looks great. Uh, it kind of, it, it lacks definition and I get it. It's, it's, it's a diorama base, but the problem is, is that when you still own the original 1-6 scale Iron Monger and you look at the somewhat animated diorama base, it's really hard to compare. My Iron Monger is still represent, my God, uh, still one of my favorite original suits. Now again, if, if you're a first time collector, there's nothing wrong with the diorama base of Iron Monger crawling out of the streets. I do like the battle plated accessories here. My wish, and I, and I won't be able to swing it because there's just so much I have on my pre-order list. I would love to have another Iron uh, Man Mark III so that I can have a battle damaged version of the Mark III with the head sculpt. That would be a completely different look. And it also create a different figure altogether. But this set is pricey. Uh, this is, uh, you know, luckily I got a good deal. I was able to get free shipping and no tax. I was actually able to buy this one at exactly at its retail price. But going through Sideshow, you're going to end up uh, uh, breaking over 500 bucks. And, and so my, my dream of picking up another one, not to mention it's also on wait list, isn't going to work. Going over the instructions here, it just I need to focus on where are all the battery compartments. Look, I'm not going to waste any friggin' time here. I'm going to USB hack it, right? I've done tutorials before. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm going to share some of my little couple of little secrets here. And uh, when you have three button cell batteries, typically most of these circuits can handle five volts. USB, five volts. Uh, I have majority of the suits already plugged in, the arc reactor and the uh, the helmet. And what I'm doing here is, is I'm trying to figure out where to drill a hole. Yes, folks, I'm going to drill a hole directly through the center. It'll serve a purpose. Uh, right through the center. And it's, it, is, it is tricky. And I don't really like showing this because it does take a leap of faith. You have to be willing to take a risk, right? It's, it's all part of the risk. And for the most part, uh, this drilling that I do, I haven't been burnt yet, knock on wood. And the purpose of that is so that I can run the wires, so I can feed the wires through the actual helmet and through the back uh, so that the helmet is sealed and flushed. Now you're probably wondering, oh, well, Denobi probably drilled through the circuit board or the wire or something. Well, no. Uh, and I'll test out. There's a nice clean hole there and, and I'll little connectors on there and so forth and I'll test it out. I'll test it out right on camera showing you that uh, that I can still supply power and it works. Now if I did, it's really it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be that hard for me to add a micro LED to do so to to actually replace it. So it just it would just be more labor for me. This is a wooden dowel and I'm just I'm 
kind of guesstimating the dimension as to a little piece of wood that I want to uh, cut. I'm going to mark it right there. I'm going to Dremel a little a slab on there. That's going to be my, my little connector, which then I'll grab some copper foil, conductive copper foil, so that I can uh, attach to both sides, and uh, a little bit of Jimmy in on there. Uh, I can then solder uh, some wires uh, to each end, and that's going to be my essentially soap reactor, my homemade fashioned soap reactor which now I can I can fish the power through it and then I can just screw everything up now I did damage the helmet and and this just it's something that folks always ask me how do you do it I, this is what I do most collectors are so finicky and panicky they save everything uh, in, in, in assumptions that they're gonna resell it I, I don't I, I like to have fun with with my products at this point right, as a collector I Dremel the little piece right at the end. You can kind of see so that the wire can fit in flush. So I did damage a little part of his back, but I did that for the sacrifice for the greater good so that I can supply power to um, every uh, power point <laughs> in this suit. He has power sockets on his thighs, on his back, on his arms. Now, I did cheat with the arms, though. I did not supply power to the actual uh, arms. I actually just fish lined some LEDs because I felt it was more efficient. It was more efficient and more labor uh, saving. Plus the LEDs that I use, I felt are more brighter than what are provided by the hands. Uh, I soldered everything together, heat gunned it and run in some power tests. And you know what? I think the suit came out pretty swanky very well uh, yeah it's it's gorgeous <laughs> it's fantastic now I did run into a short circuit which I discovered the following morning and it's on his thighs so his thighs take three little button cell batteries uh, and apparently it, it couldn't handle the uh, the the actual five volts that I was pumping in to his back lower calves uh, so the following morning, the lights did burn out. That's the first time that's ever actually, yeah, these lights right here, they were fizzled out on both legs. So clearly they could not handle the uh, five volts. Now that's, it's a, it's for me, it's an easy fix. Uh, Cause I've already uh, added the labor to the actual power sources to those thighs. So all I have to do is solder in some micro LEDs and just essentially replace the, the, the actual light source that was burnt out. So I can fix it. Uh, it's not the end of the world for me and it's just, it's just more work for me. Uh, and overall, it's, it's, it's in my hall of armor now, a day later, and it's home. It's home, it's hot toys really. It's, uh, I also have the quarter scale of the Mark III, and I, I love that suit as well, too. So I have the quarter scale to the Mark III. Now I have the uh, um, the one six scale, and that's the warning there. I put the the, the, the LED warning on there. Uh, LEDs on Cav can handle five volts, which is, I think it's bullshit because they take three button cell batteries, and three button cell batteries pumps out four and a half. So you're telling me by increasing it to five volts by half a volt, it shorts it. So it just tells me that Hot Toys is just using cheap LEDs. The last step is just putting him into my Hall of Armor, powering him up, and uh, it's it's gorgeous. I'm happy. I When it comes to the original Legacy 7, it's always a soft spot. Now, hopefully at the end of this year, your uh, Mark III, your, your older brother, the Mark II. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you. I can see your uh, chest light slowly dimming. It's been on for years, hasn't it? Oh yeah, I, I can definitely taste that uh, 2.0 Mark II. <laughs> oh yeah, you're out the door too. And once the Mark II arrives, yeah, it's just, it's bonkers because when I had this Hall of Armor belt, it's, it had just different figures. And so it's kind of like a living hall of armor. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much. Like, subscribe, 
leave your comments below and thanks for watching.